Hi, my name is Debbie, and I had a traumatic childhood, which left deep scars inside of me. Wounds that ultimately led me to just want to give up. My name is Joe. I spent a lot of time in my life relying on my own abilities and rely on myself. But God is using some recent circumstances in my life to reveal to me some of my weaknesses. I'm Kayla. I've always believed in God, but I spent the majority of my 20s doing my own thing. It wasn't until just recently that I realized God had a different plan for me. My name is Mark. I became a Christian in 1991, but over the next 25 years, I would go through so much grief that I slowly drifted away from him. Between 1996 and 2015, my entire immediate family passed away. My oldest brother and my mom both passed away from a hereditary condition that causes cancer. I lost my dad approximately 10 years after his stroke. My other brother died in a car accident while serving the Dallas Police Department. It absolutely crushed me. In September of 2021, uh, I was tested positive for COVID. As a healthy 32-year-old, I didn't really think that much of it. But nine days later, I ended up in the hospital with a 105-degree fever, sepsis, and COVID pneumonia. I met my wife when we were very young. You know, after a few years of marriage, I got wrapped up in the day-to-day -day activities of working a job and a career and having a family. And uh, as the struggles and challenges of life mounted, the stress, the anger, the anxiety that I allowed to get into my life grew to a point where I feel like I was failing miserably as a husband and uh, even worse as a father. I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Starting at an early age, I was raped and sexually abused by a family member, and it continued till I was eight and a half. I didn't tell anybody because I was afraid that it was my fault. I felt like I had a neon sign on my forehead that said, rape me that that's all that I was good for. See, on the hill of Calvary, my Savior pled for me. My Jesus set me free. And look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from his side, no greater sacrifice. So all these things were happening to me as a child. And for years, I didn't think they had affected me. But as I got older, I could see that they had. And started using pain pills, and I got addicted to those. And I started drinking. I was trying to escape the hurt, the pain, and trying to not remember things that happened. And it got so bad, I couldn't take it anymore and I decided that I wanted to end my life. In 1996, I tested positive for the same hereditary condition that took both my mom and my oldest brother's life. I was admitted to the hospital over 70 times. I was on chemotherapy for seven years, and I was unable to work from 2009 to 2019. During that time, I was angry. I felt like this life had eaten me up. So um, the doctor came in and was walking me through the steps of being placed on a ventilator. I was told to be prepared for the worst because the numbers I had gave me a 25% chance of making it. Um, when he left the room, I tried to hold it together, but I didn't know how to control my emotions because like, they don't have control over it either. <laughs> so. It was just, you know, a scary time. What ended up happening is all these pressures began to mount, and I behaved very erratically. Um, I would have strange outbursts for no reason, and uh, that takes a toll on yourself 
and it takes a toll on the people that you love. And so my wife came to me and said, this isn't gonna work anymore. I can't take your actions and your attitude and the person that you've become, and it's not healthy for our children to see you act this way. So in early February, uh, my wife and I separated, and for the first time in my life, I realized that there was nothing that I was going to be able to do to fix the situation that I had put myself into. Seek for the freedom he has won. Even death is dead and done. His life has overcome. Oh, speak, say the name above all. You know, I was at my very rock bottom, and in a moment of desperation, God very vividly put into my mind, he said, Joe, I've given you the first 40 years, and I've let you do it however you want it. How about you give me the next 40 years, and I'll show you what I can do with it. And so I made the decision that I would be fully submitted to his will in my life, and since then I've been on a journey with God. The only reason I didn't freak out was because I ended up surrendering completely to God. I gave him all my fears, um, all my worries. And when I did that, I felt this relief or this calmness because I knew I was either going to, you know, live the life that I'm living now um, or I would be with him. And then either way that I was going to be okay. So I reached a turning point where my life really wasn't going the direction I wanted it to go. And my niece invited me to church. And I can't really explain it except that God spoke to me so powerfully. And my prayer was, just teach me how to walk a new way. And God's answered that prayer. My family kind of gave me an ultimatum. So I sought treatment and um, I had a wonderful counselor who told me that God never forgot about me, never left my side, and that he is my savior. And I felt like I needed saving. It's been six months now, and I just feel so grateful that I'm alive. I don't know what people would do if they didn't have faith, because I gave myself to God. And in that moment, Jesus saved me. You know, I believe that real change is only possible with God. He's renewed me in a way that is really hard to describe. And each and every day, I feel stronger because Jesus is alive inside of me. Through the grace of God, I am now six years sober, and he made me a survivor. It just is amazing, the hope that he's given me. It's been an incredible change in my life. God was in the driver's seat when I came to Christ in 91, and I really feel like I told Jesus Christ to get out of the car. And I felt like I crashed the car about a mile or two down the road. And instead of God saying, serves you right, God ran after me. And he said, I want to take care of you. If you just give me a chance. And I have. And I'm just filled with amazement at just everything that God's done for me. Now on a throne of majesty, the Father's will complete. He reigns in victory.
done.